Praise the Lord, everybody. And welcome to the virtual roundtable tonight. Amen. We're going to talk about some things. Those of you that have seen uh, the Facebook, uh, the topic is, I've got something to say. I've got something to say. Amen. And realizing where we are right now, I'm sure everybody's got a little something that they want to say or some things that they're dealing with. And it is our desire to give you the opportunity to voice it, to express it. Amen. As we uh, come around this table and look at the condition that our world is in today and as Christians, uh, the world wants to know what are we doing about it? What do we have to say about it? And I believe that we have something to say about it on tonight. So joining me tonight, amen, my, I, I call them my dream team, my power team, Evangelist Nika Williams, amen, Minister Jennifer Anu, Minister Stephen Kionis, and also tonight, I'm hoping that he will pop in on the screen, Minister Sean Kennan, amen. He is one of our black men in blue, amen, amen. And he's going, they're going through a difficult time during this time that we're living in. So we want to kick this meeting off as we usually do with prayer. Amen. So let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you tonight. Father, thanking you because you're God. In spite of all that's going on, we know that you are yet in control of all things. Nothing gets by you, God. Nothing goes over your head. Father, we know that you are totally in control. Father, we pray that during this time and this hour, uh, that we're in right now, God, that you would uh, give us what we need through your word, God, for your word is our place. It is our hiding place. It is the place where we can go during these turbulent times. And Father, we come to you as the body of Christ, God, seeking you for answers, Lord. Father, where hearts are breaking and minds are disturbed, Father, I pray that you would bring us center, bring us center in you, Father. Father, that we won't get caught up, God, but we will listen for your voice. And Father, move accordingly. So now, Father, we bind the devil on every hand. Father, we pray, God, that you'll send peace to our nation. And God, help us during this hour. Now, Father, we release ourselves into your hands and we ask you to be glorified, God, as we open this conversation on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We thought it not robbery. Amen. We know you all were getting ready to go to our next subject, our next thing that we were going to do. And we were going to do our... Um, what is our vision boards, our vision boards tonight. But because of what's going on, we wanted to pause from that for a moment and kind of speak to where we are right now. I know that it's not um, news to many of you, but we're going through uh, a very trying time. We thought that the pandemic was a big deal. And it is, and I want you to know that it is still a big issue. People are still dying, amen, from the COVID-19, amen. So we haven't really gotten through that yet, and yet we're faced with another situation. Uh, during these last three months, we've watched our schools shut down. We've watched graduations being canceled. Uh, we've watched the loved ones close to us, lives being taken away, amen. We've watched... Uh, just a bunch of things take place. We no longer have social uh, uh, closeness that we had close to us. Lives being taken away. Amen. Now, Amen. Uh, uh, Sister Sherelle, was there something? No, I'm sorry. Apologies. Okay. And during this time, uh, like I said, in spite of all of everything that's going on, to be thrown in the equation, we're now faced. Those of you that have been watching the news, we've seen rioting. We've seen them tearing up Fifth Avenue, and we've seen them 
burning down things. And we see men and women out on the street because they're, they don't know how to handle what's going on. And they want justice and they want it now. Amen. And, and, and they're going about it in different ways. And they're just trying to get their voices heard. Amen. And, and, and we understand that. So with all that we're facing, uh, the last thing that we saw was a man by the name of Mr. Floyd. Amen. And here we are again, not too long after the murder of our Eric Gardner. Amen. And here we have another man that's dead. Amen. And we hear the words echo. I can not breathe. I can not breathe. For those of us that have watched the video, we have watched the news. And when we look at these things, it does create rage. It creates anger. Amen. Because we're trying to find out how is it that we've come so far and we yet have so far to go. We have those that have marched, amen, the late Dr. King, and those that have marched on the front line trying to speak to uh, this discrimination, amen, that's going on in America. And it's amazing that even here we are in 2020, and we don't see many changes, amen. So it is time for the church amen, to stand up and be counted, amen. It's time for us to have a voice because I can hear the master saying, well, what is the church doing about it? What are we doing about it, amen? So that's what we want to talk about tonight. We want to talk about what we're doing about it, what we can do about it, how can we do something about it, amen. I don't think this is the time for the church to sit idle. Amen. But I believe that it's a time that we come together with a strategic plan. Amen. We just can't go out and just start doing stuff. I believe that we must hear from the Lord, hear what the Lord is saying to us in this hour. Amen. So we're dealing with two emotions on today. Amen. I took a little time just to look at this. And as I look at the situation with Eric Gardner, and with George Floyd, and also with um, Ahmaud Aubrey. Uh, we know that just uh, a few months ago, well, not a few months ago, not too long ago, I, I think it was in February, uh, he was uh, shot, amen, uh, just by jogging, amen. Can you imagine? Because he's a black man jogging, someone felt that they had a right to take his life. Amen. So here we are in these situations. And when you read this stuff, anger sparks up in us. And the scripture came to me and said, be angry, but sin not. We have to learn how to be angry and not sin. Anger is, the basic, is a basic human emotion that all people experience. Typically, typically, it is triggered by an emotion, hurt or anger. Amen. It is a hurt and it is an anger that usually is experienced when we are feeling or something occurs that comes against us to injure us, mistreat us, or to make us feel uncomfortable. Anger. And along with anger, there is something else that comes with it, and that is rage. Amen. What you see on the street is rage. Amen. People's hearts are failing them because of fear. So rage speaks to violence, and it is an uncontrollable anger. So when people reach rage, it is an uncontrollable uh, anger. So this is what we want to talk about tonight. Amen. I want you to be, um, be transparent tonight. Uh, I've spoken to a lot of people, and they told me they just feel like hurting somebody. <laughs> and I'm like, that is not the attitude amen, that you want to take, amen? We have to take another approach. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And even to the ones that did this to our brothers, you know what? They can be saved. 
Amen. And I know that's a hard thing to say in the time that we're living in, but we were all repeated offenders until God saved us. So we all must understand, amen, that everyone has a right to the tree of life. Amen. So we're going to open up and I'm going to open up with our panelists. Amen. Those that are on the line with me and I'm going to let them just give a few pointers in here as we get started uh, with this uh, round table topic. Amen. I've got something to say. Uh, Evangelist Nika, uh, why, why don't you kick it off for us? Praise the Lord, everyone. We wanted to Praise thank you all for coming out um, again and joining us around the virtual table. Um, we know that we deviated from our series, but um, we were gently reminded and we want to be not be tone deaf to what's going on, to, what, to what's happening in our society. Um, and we wanted to open the floor for all of you to um, voice your opinions, um, give us give some ideas, some strategies, some techniques that we can use as a church, as a family, um, so that we can use to be able to do what we can do in our corner of the world. Um, I'm going to start off by being very transparent with you. Um, it took me a while to watch the video. Um, but when I did watch it, it did something to me. While this is not a new thing that is happening in our society, it's nowhere near new. Um, lynching is part of this. They just change the ropes and use their feet or their knees um, or right. their arms to take the breath away of people. So while this is not new, um, the part of this that really got to me was the tonation, the body language of the officer that was robbing Mr. Floyd of his life. The smug smirk on his face when he when he looked when he was doing it, how he looked directly into the cameras that were filming him doing this, and when um, his fellow officers were speaking to him on the radio, telling him, "You know, that's enough." He said he will not stop. Um, and that bothered me because it felt like to me um, that he felt justified. He knew who he was. He understood white privilege. Um, and he understood that I'm only doing what those that empower me and are over me allow me to do. And I'm actually bringing a trophy back to the people mm. that encourage me, empower me, and empower me to do this. Um, and the body language. Um, the other part of it that got to me was when Mr. Floyd began to call for his mom, who has been dead for two years, and understanding the psychological pathology and understanding the mental challenges that the body goes through once oxygen is leaving the brain. It bothered me that his whole psyche was messed up. There was just so much in that that I saw that literally when he died, I, a piece of me died with him. Um, and then it created a level of fear. Um, we all have, my pastor is a black man. My brothers are black men. The men at my church, the deacons are black men. My uncles are black men. Um, and every time they go out, every time they close the door, every time they leave the house, the fear that they may not come back resonates with me um, at the hands of those who are meant to serve and protect me. And then on the other side, being in criminal justice for 20 years um, and working in that place, I have officers that are friends, that are family members. So it tore me in places that I didn't want to be torn. However, you know, I understand that I'm not supposed to be angry in a sinful manner, but to tell you that I'm not angry, I wouldn't be telling the truth. I'm very angry. I just feel like there's something that as a church world, and I'm not talking about only CPT, but the kingdom of God, there's something that we can do. And I feel if we come together and reason, we can come up with a, um, a solution or not necessarily a solution, a solution, but we can get started on a path to changing this. Um, and there's something we could do. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Evangelist. Amen. Point well taken. All right. I see Minister Kenneth has just joined us. Uh, uh, Minister Jennifer Arnoux. Go ahead. So there's so many different layers to this situation. A lot has come across my mind in reference to uh, what we've been through as uh, Blacks. 
you know, different experiences that we had, not only with cops, but with our jobs. Like it just definitely triggered a lot of, of experience, past experiences that has taken place over the years. Thinking about experiences with myself, experiences with my brothers, experiences in the public school system. There were so many things that came to mind once this happened. Um, so it's just a lot of mixed emotions, you know, um, a lot of questions, you know, um, just a lot of, of, of just not really understanding, you know, um, you know, why things are happening the way that they are. Just so many different things going on. Um, going to a couple of trainings, you know, you know, appreciating the fact that there are people that are standing up and saying something about it. Um, and not, they're not minorities, you know, other people that's deciding to speak up, you know, stand up for what's right, you know, appreciating that. Also, as a parent, um, just understanding, trying to figure out how to really talk to a, my younger child, you know, my oldest is 14 years old. So she understands a lot already, but being able to have these type of conversations with the children, you know, went to a training today. Uh, with kids, you know, if the students bring it up in your in the teachers' the classrooms, you know, some of the teachers felt uncomfortable in reference to talking about the situation. But you have to understand that a lot of these kids that are standing before you are black and brown kids, you know, and they have a lot of questions, and they're going to need to kind of uh, be given some type of clarity as to what is really going on. Is rioting, you know, what, what is that about? You know, just all these different things that's going on. So. I'm so happy that this platform is taking place right now so that we can have this conversation and figure out together as believers, you know, what can we do? How can we speak? We know we have to pray. We know that part. But what else can we do as the people of God to help bring about the change that's needed within our world? Amen. Thank you, Minister Arnu. Uh, Minister Kionis. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. So as I prayed about this and I looked at the situation, initially I looked at it two ways, both in the natural and in the spiritual. In the natural, of course, we get fear, we get anger. Um, as a black man, a person of color, to walk around, it's almost like just, just being who you are, you're um, a target. But I have to realize that beyond me being a man of color, beyond me being African-American, beyond me, Above all, that I'm a Christian. The whole point of this is that God has saved my soul. And beyond that, that's priority in my life. And as God just began to spoke to me, um, one scripture that he dropped in my heart, and it comes from first, uh, 2 Timothy verse uh, chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Know this also, that in the last days there will be perilous, um, the last days perilous times shall come. And literally he said, this is that time. We're living in perilous times where things are just going around. We have the pandemic, um, the reawakening, or not reawakening, but the racism being um, stirred up again, and all these different things that are happening. And really, we're living in the last days. And with that, no, we know that the Lord is soon to come. And with all that, we know that things are just going to get worse. And we have to realize, as the body of Christ, as the saints of God, that we have to prepare and be ready to handle all these situations that are coming our way. And the only thing that can help us is God. Amen. Only the Holy Ghost is going to help us to handle how to handle our emotions, how to handle every situation in life, how to be angry and sin not. How do you do that? Only God can do that. All right. Yes, we have to step up and do something, but we also have to use wisdom. We have to stand. We have to have our morals and um, we have to have standards in life and realize we could be upset, but we don't have to be destructive. Amen. We have to use um, the wisdom God has given us. My mom always taught me that common sense is not too common. <laughs> True. And we have to realize that we have to use the, God, the sense that God has given us. All right. So, yes, we can protest and we can um, do There's so much we can do to let our voices be heard. But most of all, as the Bible Christ, we have to know how to pray. And if you open up your eyes in the spirit, you can see you can see how the devil is just moving in the midst of all of this. The spirits that you can see on these cops' faces as he killed this man. 
the demonic activity is just ridiculous. But we have to tap into the power of the Holy Ghost and know that God can do all things. And God can move in all situations. And we have to know how to walk in our power. We're powerful people. Amen. I believe that with all my might, that the power that God has given us, we really have to activate in these days and times. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Minister Keones. Next, we will hear from our minister, Sean Kennan, who is just joining us. Amen. And, and he is a black man in blue. All right. So it's, 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 it's a little different for him than it is for us. Minister Kennan, you're muted, mm -hmm. sir. There you go. We can hear you now. You can hear me now? Yes, sir. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Uh, first, I have a scripture in Romans. It says, let love be without dissimulation, a whore that which is evil, cleave to that which is good, be kindly affectionate one to another, with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing constant in prayer, distributing to this necessity of the saints, given in hospitality, lest them which persecute you, lest them which curse you, rejoice with them that rejoice, weep with them that weep, be of the same mind toward one another, mind not high thing, but condense to the men of low estate, be not wise in your own eye, Recompense no, to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible as much as life within you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give no place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If they thirst, give him drink. For doing so, you will reap coals, heaps of coals, fire upon his head. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. And I, that scripture came to me as I came across this news post and the video of George Floyd. And there are a lot of feelings that I have uh, knowing what goes on in the department. Uh, first of all, let me say that it's not our. Uh, our mission, our, our part of our mission statement is to protect and to preserve life. That is priority. Even though we have the power to arrest, we have the power to take people to jail, the first priority is to protect and preserve all life. And that is so much sometimes missed when it comes to black men and uh, people of color. And I want to say that it's embedded deep, deep, deep in the fabric of society all over America. And I think uh, it's even deeper than we think. Uh, they, uh, part of our discussions when we talk about racism, when we talk about colorism, it's even in uh, colorism. They talk about people with who are darker skin serving higher sentences. We talk about people with darker skin with wider noses are readily are meet with brute force or readily meet uh, force more than anybody else. And it's, I don't know, it's something that is deep in the fabric of our society and of our nation. When it comes to uh, criminal uh, attack, it's, 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 it, it, this really has changed me because uh, when I saw the uh, Eric Gardner situation five years ago or six years ago, we were, I was in torn because I saw what the police were trying to do and I saw it as an accident or a mistake or they didn't mean to do that. They were trying to do their job and at the same time they had to uh, you know, I make an arrest, but 
now I have a new pair of eyes and I have looked at this situation differently and I even looked at the Eric Gardner situation differently. And it's caused me to examine myself and sometimes uh, into the dehumanization of black people and that where their lives don't matter and we don't consider what we're doing. Why can I say this? Because I, you can, this happens and this will never happen to a black person. I mean, this will never happen to a white person. Mm. And so that's the litmus test. Will a white person ever go through this? And they will never go through this. Mm. They're, you, you use force and as soon as you use force, it's subdue, when it's subdued or once the person gain control, you lift them up, you put them in the car, you lift them up, you, 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 know, you treat them like a human. Now, when it comes to brown and especially men of color, uh, black men, it's like we have to, you know, use force until you yield or until you submit. And if there is no submission in the force, then we use force until, unfortunately, our life is taken out. So I pray that in your anger, as this Vanish Nika said, you sin not. And that you use your voice to protest or you use your voice to stand out or you use the, the media to talk about it and have the discussion. What is talking about and having the discussion, it, we can go to the root and find out where it stems from to root it out of our society. Because we can talk about it and you know have these, these officers get arrested, but that does not affect change. We need to affect change to our policy. We need to affect change to how we uh, train, to our, how we train police. We need to have the racism conversation in our police department and we need to be honest and we're not honest we sweep over we sweep under the rug it's not us it's not me it's him but that so easily could have been uh, an officer of color and why is that and we need to discover why that is and why we do what we do in, in uh, our society thank you minister kennan uh for those those of our listeners Amen. We are opening now the lines for you. And uh, I think Minister Kennan said something. He said a lot of things that were very good. But I want to say to those of you that are watching, uh, for us to affect change in our communities, I want to throw some names at you. Uh, I want you to make sure that you know who your Senator James Sanders is. You need to know who uh, Congressman Gregory Meeks, you, want, you need to know who he is. When, when they tell you, um, Sister uh, Adrian Adams, uh, you need to know who these people are because they serve our community. And those of us that are not doing the census, you need to do your census report. You need to let them know uh, because when you do that, that tells them how, much te how many teachers we need in a school. That lets them know what we need in our community. When you do the census report, Staying home and not voting is not the answer, all right? We need power to go into these places, and these men and these women that are in position, they're the ones that carry our arguments to the courts. So we need to make sure that we get involved in our community, know who our community people are, so that this way we can start to affect the change. All right, no more just staying home and it's voting and you don't even know, you're like, oh, I'm not going. Oh, well, I, I don't even know what that's all about. Well, shame on you. You need to know what it's all about. And it's gonna make a difference in your community. You know why our white brothers and sisters, their communities are doing so much better? Because they go out. They go out. So come on, let's wake up y'all and let's go out. Uh, we got a big vote that's coming up. You can mess around and stay home if you want to. <laughs> you can stay home if you want to and you'll get what you did. So please make it your point to get out to those polls and vote. All right? Get out and vote. Um, I don't know if there's anybody that wants to comment at this time. Um, uh, I just wanted the ministers to kind of open up the floor that you know we're very transparent on what we're feeling. Uh, you're not feeling this alone, but we know that God has given us power over all of the power of the adversary. So let's understand that we're not powerless in this fight that's going on. 
All right. So, uh, Sister Sherelle, is there anyone out there that would like to chime in? There is. Um, I just do, do want to uh, let everybody know how to do that. So, okay. um, on your, if you're dialed in and you're calling into the to the Zoom call, and you're going to hit star nine. Um, and just give it a, a couple of moments while we are able to call you and unmute you so that you can be heard. If you are joining from your mobile phone or from a laptop, just go ahead and at the lower left-hand corner at the bottom of your screen, go ahead and you're going to raise your hand and you'll be called on. We do have a couple of comments already that are coming through, not only on Facebook, but we have two hands raised. So I'll call on the ones that are hands raised. Um, I had something to say, and then there's also the comments we'll go through on Facebook. Well, so, Sister Sherelle, why don't we take your comment first? Because since you're navigating us through this, let's, let's, let's hear from you. Okay. So um, my feelings are... You know, it's it's been conflicted. It's been conflicted for a while about this whole scenario. Um, even as I'm facilitating this phone, this, this call uh, from you know my dining room, I'm hearing outside um, firecrackers, and I don't know, you know, and I'm hearing you know screams, and I'm hearing you know protests, and I'm hearing you know cop cars all day long, and it's right outside. Right. So it's that immediate thing of, you know, the, the hearts go out to those who are uh, who know exactly why they're protesting and protesting, you know, peacefully and, and doing what they can to be involved. And then it is also um, what the impact is on the community, because I've also seen my community change. And it's it's been different for for the past five, six years where it's been, you know, it's been a different demographic that has come into my neighborhood. And that doesn't necessarily mean that the, the neighborhood has gotten better. The, the houses have gone and been more expensive. However, there's way more graffiti. Right. There's way more vandalism and things like that kind of happening. And so it's hard to see even in, in this sort of situation It's hard to. Um, have righteous anger here, right? How to be, you know, how to how to feel that 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 anger and contention towards, you know, this thing that we see happening over and over, and you kind of just wanting that cycle to end. And even as a young person, you know, when you get, you know, I feel like the generations before us had a lot more patience. Um, and I say that, you know, to their credit, because there is this cycle that continues to happen where it's like, okay, you step on my foot once and you kind of brush past it, but then you keep doing it. And eventually I'm going to get upset. And eventually I'm going to then say, okay, no, I feel like you're doing this on purpose. It feels like that's what we've come to this impasse of just like, I am tired of the same thing happening. And so there is that that action that says that the Christian, you know, lifestyle and that innate part of me that the Holy Spirit rules says, go to your father and make this petition, because in that petition, you have power. And then there is the the, the tangible part that lives and don't and doesn't see that automatic vengeance. Right. I don't see that automatic vengeance is mine. say the Lord, I will repay. I'm like, well, what happens now? Right. I want some. I want to change right now and mm -hmm. not being able to see that, not being able to, to hear that and to feel it. Right. We are still in a situation where all the cops that were involved in that that murder haven't been arrested. Right. We're still in, you know, multiple murders that have taken place even within this year alone. They haven't you know, they haven't been arrested. They haven't been charged. So um, it's a very raw, like a lot of raw emotions. And then I'm also trying to think logically about how they continue to keep us in the cycle with a lot of these things, right? And what is the, what's the mold and the narrative that we begin to start to see in stories and media um, and how that begins to go, we're seeing that unravel. And the only change is now we have phones that are just like, I hear what you guys are putting out that's being said, but here's what's really happening. Here's what's happening from the ground. And we're going to be the newscasters. We're going to be the reporters. Mm -hmm. and, and so it just ends up with not knowing how to truly see what, you, what you're seeing or believe what you're seeing, how to believe um, 
God in this in this situation and say, you know, Maranatha, you know, God, come and get us, you know, help us. And it's that waiting period, it's that patience period. Um, and that that's yeah, that, that's my heart for now. Amen. Well, well said, Sister Sherelle, and you're not uh, in this alone. Uh, a quote from Dr. King during this uh, during the time of the march. He made a statement. He said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And that is a quote from Dr. King. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to love in the time that we're in right now. You know, so we have to learn how to get a hold to what's going on around us and not let it overtake us. We're to overtake it, you know, but good point. Thank you for your view, Sister Sherelle. Who's, who's next? All right. We have uh, a few callers. So we have um, Galaxy Tab E. I just um, unmuted you. You can just go ahead and unmute yourself. There we go. Praise the Lord. That's me, Sister Kathy. I didn't type my name in. But there's a point I want to bring out. It's not a white versus black. It's a everyone versus racism, racist. And when we come to that conclusion in our minds and set, that we shouldn't be a white versus black issue. It should be everyone, everyone should be versing uh, uh, racism and racist. And we, when you go that way, you can sell out some of the hate. But right now, it's a fresh issue in everyone's mind because it's a consistent um, situation where someone takes in their own way to either shoot someone or kill somebody because that's the way they feel. But they have races down deep down in them, and they don't know how to resolve it in their lives. So they act on it. So what we have to do is come to the conclusion that we're going to fight racism. Not people, not individual, but fight the racist situation that a person may be uh, uh, manifesting in their lives. And if we can get that out of them and help them with that, they'll, they can see clear. But right now they got they they they've been hit years and years of built up races and they and they don't believe they're racist. Some people don't believe they're racist, and they are until something happened. Then when something happened, then you see it all manifest. It comes out. But how come? Why we can't channel it before it gets to this point? This is a guy and, that's and as a teacher, I, I realize that racism is something that's taught to people. Good point. Racism. As a child, it's embedded in them. The people are not naturally born racist. So it's one key thing that we have to do. We have to educate people. And I think that's what we have to realize that um, white people, black people, I don't care who you are, we're all created the same. And that's how we have to use our gifts and how what God embedded in us that we have to um, address that. So education is a really big piece about racism. And again, as a saint of God, we have to realize it's also a spirit. So not only is it an, uh, um, something that someone's taught, it's a spirit that's embedded into a person or into a culture. And the only way to fight that is with the spirit. And, and just recognize that it's an old spirit. Mm -hmm. This spirit has come from slavery to this time. It is so powerful that it has Black people warring against other Black people because your skin is lighter than mine Sometimes people think they're better than you because they're lighter, all right? Uh, uh, slavery teaches us that the light-skinned Blacks got to stay in the master's house, all right? The dark-skinned Blacks work the fields, and we still have that work the field master's house mentality. Mm -hmm. And until we break that cycle, we will keep coming. You see how this thing rises up every so often? And it just keeps rising and keeps rising. It's because Minister Keon said it must be taught. It's got to be taught. We have to teach people out of it. Mm -hmm. All right? We got to teach them out of it. Uh, through the word of God, we got to teach them out of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever saw this woman. Um, she's an older professor. I know Jennifer right heard of her. But she did a social experiment. She's all over the internet. Um, mm -hmm. Brown eyes, blue oh, eyes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And she did this experiment where she um, taught people how they're taught racism. And it's just so powerful. I don't know if, Nika, you want to elaborate on that. 
Um, yes, what she did was a social, it was a social um, practice and she actually got fired behind doing it. But what she did was she separated her class, her class, I think they were like second graders um, and she separated them according to their eye color. If you had brown eyes, you was put to the back of the class, you were treated, nobody talked to you. But if you had blue eyes, you could eat lunch earlier, you can go and play recess. And you can, and the, you know, the kids were looking like, what, what is that? Well, I didn't, it's not my fault my eyes are brown or, well, I'm better because my eyes are blue. You see, I'm in the front. And then she switched it and she did it for the other kids. And then she had them come back and talk. And, it, and at the time she did it, it was a very heated time in the country. And it, it, it took her all over the world though. She did it in Russia and she did it in a lot of places. And just like Minister Quinona said, racism is taught, but the job of the church, I believe, is to re-educate people. Because mm -hmm. the Bible declares that perfect love casteth out all fear because fear has torment. So if we can elevate the love of God in the midst of all of this, all of the fear and the torment can be um, eradicated. And then Ephesians declares, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness in this world. So, you know, I think the stance of the church, while we're praying on our knees and fasting and word quoting, we have to be strategic about the re-education of people. And that's enforcing the love of God. But then we have to be re-educated mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of what I did was into pre in preparing for tonight. There was a term that I studied a little bit, and it's called microaggression. And it's, it's a, that's what's going on. It's, it's not micro anymore, but it started out with little irritable nuances done by society. Like when the man killed the nine African-American people in the church in South Carolina, when they arrested him, they, they neatly cuffed him and then they took him to Burger King to eat because they knew the process of being jailed was long. But when they arrested this person, you know, he was tried and, and his trial and everything took place that occurred. So yeah. microaggression and they, this is, and um, the media keeps running the video so it can keep playing in your head and playing in your mind and it can hit you on every area. That's a microaggression, rubbing against your emotions. And we do it to each other. We do it in the church. We do it on our jobs. That's the little things that build up to the anger. I'm not agreeing with the with the with the protest with the looting, but I understand why because when a person is not heard. Looting is the language of the ones that you ain't paying attention to. So this right. is kind of where we are. Amen. Thank you, Ibn Um mm -hmm. we, we got a few hands waved, and, and, mm -hmm. and we panelists, we're going to lay back for, uh, for a little bit and give y'all an opportunity uh, to go. All right. We have our Minister Josh. Hello, you guys can hear me? Yep. Yes, we can. Um, yeah, and, and the lady's name was um, Jane Elliott. Yes. Yes. Um, very good um, um, point. Um, two things I'm going to say, and I'm going to be extremely quick. Um, first is uh, I go to out to work every day, even now during this pandemic. And um, since all this stuff started to happen, to be quite honest, I, I didn't even realize it was happening because the majority of the time I'm working in Long Island and I work in neighborhoods that, you know, may not see this stuff happening. And as I'm out there, you know, I'm dealing with a lot of customers who are white and dealing with these white customers, a lot of the times in myself, I make it a point to, I don't even know how to say this. I'm just going to say it how I, I hear it in my head, but to make sure that they look, <clears throat> they look at me and say, well, he's not like one of them. And I can attest that many African-Americans do the exact same thing when you feel like you're doing this not just for you. So when I go to a customer, I speak, you know, very proper. You know, if I show up on time, I'm, I'm well shaven, I'm well groomed. And for me, in my mind, some a lot of the time, my head says, I don't know who I'm going to encounter today. And I'm not going to let my people, I'm not going to go and represent what they think I am. I'm not the hoodlum. I'm not the guy who walks around with his pants sagging down. I'm not the guy who reeks of weed. No, because that's sometimes what they just, lump us all into so when i go somewhere th these things are in my mind and when i go to help people I i'm like wow you know i, I gotta kind of get out of it but that's something that a lot of white people never understand that as a black young man and even as a kid 
we, we were kind of taught this. My mother would tell us when we were growing up, you know, don't act like those kids out there in the street. You're different. So when I go somewhere, you know, it's always in my mind to, to do my best, but not just for me, but really just for all of us. Cause I want them to know that, yeah, there are ignorant people all over the planet, not just, you know, you know, they're just ignorant people everywhere. But when they see this black man, this black man speaks well. This black man is educated. This black man knows his stuff. You know, I go out there with that mindset. And the second thing I want to say is that as I was out in work today, I, I forgot that they were boarding up all the malls. So I was in Manhasset and I passed by Americana Mall. And I saw a police officer, I was pumping my gas and I saw a police officer and I said, sir, what are they doing over there? He said, they're boarding up the mall. I said, oh, wow. And because of the protest, he said, yeah. And he said, they're, they're, they have us stationed here around this mall and we just have to sit here pretty much all day just in case something jumps off. And I looked at him, I said, wow. And I looked at him and I said, listen, you know, be safe out there. And when he looked at me, when I said that, he kind of looked at me thinking that maybe I was going to say something else because I'm black and he's white. But a lot of my friends are police officers, you know, Minister Kennan, Devin Diggs, um, our brother, um, our brother Jeff Smith, you know, we have so many people that are involved in different things. So, I mean, overall, this, this thing has made me very angry. I did cry a little bit today just thinking about it. And I was just like, Lord, you know, it could be me that goes out there. But uh, that, that's what I wanted to say. Thank, Thank you. you, Minister Josh. Thank you, Minister Josh. All right. We have a mobile number set, uh, ending in 8796. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord evangelist. Yes. Um, two things. The first thing is when it comes to voting, they send out letters to people. And during this virus, you don't have to uh, go to the polls. You had an update they gave on there that you could apply and you could be at home and send your, because I sent mine in, your, your ballot in. It had nothing to do with age. But another thing I want to say that had bothered me, see, because I came up in the 60s. And I could tell you some stories, make your hair stand up, how they did us. But the day, the day, I think it was today or yesterday, last night, this girl was walking down the street and she had her hand up and this police pushed her down. And nobody came to say anything or to do anything. And she got a concussion. And what I was saying is that, like, y'all was comment, comment on the fact that it's not that Nobody really mean to hurt nobody, but when anger come in, everything else come in. That's because right. that man pushed that young lady down. He's a big old man, and she's a little skinny girl. Well, she was look like Puerto Rican or something. It doesn't. I'm not looking at the color part. I'm looking at the accident that happened, and we got to look at the accident that happened. As a Christian, we say we keep saying it. Vengeance is the Lord, but they don't know nothing about that. Ku Klux Klan has never died. They will come and get your son out the bed. When you came up to, to visit us from Chicago, you had to change your tags. You couldn't ride around the town. You couldn't buy a Cadillac because they found out where you get that money from. And they would get your black boys and then during the night they would come down the street shooting up in your house. I mean, it has never stopped. Like they said, it's never been an end to it. Chicago is one of the most prejudiced places you ever want to go. Mm. I went downtown to 42nd and Broadway. We went in there to eat. They looked at us like we were crazy because there were no black people in there. It's never stopped. But when is it going to stop? What can we do as Christians, as people of color, whatever color you are, to stop this demic that's out here? It's worse than the corona. It's worse than that. When people can't get along, I just want to say that, and I pray it helps somebody. Thank you, Evangelist Berkeley. Thank you. Thank you. Our, our panel, we are, we are writing down notes and we will speak to some of these things. Uh, uh, after we get all of our callers in. Uh, our next caller, Sister Sherelle. All right, we have mobile number ending in 0027. Um, caller, if, you're un if you want to unmute yourself, you you'll be able to speak. Hello? Okay. 
All right, we have our uh, Deacon Diggs. You can go ahead and unmute. Praise the Lord, saints. This is Roslyn. Um, I wanted to make a comment. The question to me is still on the table. Uh, what can the church do? And my opinion is I, I feel as if the church, yes, we should pray because the Bible says pray without ceasing. Men ought always to pray and not faint. But I so believe that we should be involved with the precincts. Now, they have different units in the precinct. There's one, um, I think it's like the community board or something. And getting involved with the community board, it could start off with little things like if there's an abandoned vehicle on your block, you call it in and they'll call whoever it is to come and tow that vehicle away. I think that's where we need to start. Um, just getting more involved with the precinct because then when they begin to see you and know that you about change, because these cops at the end of the day, um, they want to go home safe. Okay. But in order for them to do that, sometimes they are aggressive and no, it should not be. But then if we could get involved with the precinct, with this community board, as they go and they speak to the officers, we can let them know that, you know, um, start your day with prayer, just something, spend a couple of hours at a church, go visit, go pray, go read your Bible, and it'll give you a different mindset as you start your day. But um, where the officers are concerned, yeah, they get very aggressive. And no, I don't agree at all with them going out killing anyone. But, and in this instance, I think it's just a little different. He was just, he meant to kill that man. Okay, but I think sometimes they get in the court, the, I guess, like in, just mixed in a rage. And the whole thing is in their mind, I need to go home safe at the end of the day. And uh, Evangelist Williams was talking about the officer that knocked the lady over. Here in Brooklyn, at the Barclays Center on either last night or the night before, they were setting the RMPs on fire, throwing uh, bottles and things at the cops. Yeah, I mean, they do what they can to try to, you know, keep the peace and this, that, and the other. But we have to realize these people are human as well, okay? And we angry not at the person, it's the uniform and we take that out on them. But if we think about it, the, the officers that they are sending out to these areas where it's high crime, these people are coming from Long Island and they're not, you know, they're not familiar with all that goes on and they are afraid. So they begin to just, you know, act irrational. So, I mean, I think honestly, the church while praying, while fasting, because these are the end times and the Bible said that it's gonna wax constantly worse and worse. So that is our hope right now in the fasting and praying, but um, the Bible also says faith without works is dead. So I think that we have to do something just as well. So that's my thoughts. Wonderful. Thank you, thank you for that comment. Um, mistakes and um, she is she has a connection because her son works on the force and you know every mother wants to make sure that at the end of the day that their child comes home safe amen uh, who else do we have who else do we have yes um Bishop um, we do have uh, three more um, okay. uh, our first lady um, Renee Motes stated that that uh, unit in the precincts is called Community Precinct Council for being involved, getting involved with the local precincts. One moment. I have our deaconess Annette Hanley. You can unmute yourself. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise um, the Lord. Looking at this, and, oh, this is Deacon Hanley. Looking at this and thinking about this. Um, we kind of figured that. You didn't sound like <laughs> Sister Annette. 
<laughs> uh, growing up, growing up in the '60s, um, um, we have seen these things. Um, having a black president was unheard of. Um, being chased out of places and neighborhoods and everything. Um, having a gun um, trained to the back of my neck, and due to all because I'm I am black. One thing um, I have learned is that it's not everyone. It's not all whites, but it's certain whites. And you begin, uh, they don't have to say anything or, or it's the way they carry themselves or what they do. You know, you tend to know who they are. And you, what I know that I, what I knew I had to do is to say, okay, how to control my anger how to forgive them and not let me act the same way that they act or take revenge. Um, and I understand today, you know, vengeance is the Lord, you know. And when I look at these things, I, lay, I thank God because of the progress, seeing President Obama and his inauguration, you know, that was something that a lot of whites that I talked to can't comprehend the way I felt about it because the meaning behind it. And also, I thank God for social media and the videos because these things have been going on for a long time and it's now being seen. It's now exposed. And it's progress uh, is being made. And I thank God for opening my, my eyes, you know, to understand who's behind this the principalities of this world, the prince of this world. And he's been driving um, anytime somebody wants to be free. You know, the devil always drive to kill that person that wants to be free. You know, he, um, the devil to try to kill, kill um, our Lord and Savior, you know. And what he was trying to do is free us, you know, from our sin, our burden. And I thank God you know, that we're free from these things and that we can see this and that we don't have to act the same way or feel the same way. And yes, you know, we get a little angry because we see ourselves hung on a tree, um, still being beaten, but now it is exposed, the world sees it, and the way, um, taking a, a page out of Dr. King's and, and out of the Bible, the way these things were done away with is with peace and prayer. And that's the way that we have to handle these things. And yes, go to the polls and do what we're supposed to do. A lot of people had died for us to go to the polls and vote, you know, and we should take that liberty and do that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Hanley. All right, we have um, caller ending in 5405. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Deacon Chase. Praise the Lord. Praise yeah. Um, I was um, by that, um, what I seen on the TV, it kind of, I you say, brought back deja vu to me because uh, I think it was what, uh, 2012, I was still in um, Queens, headed to work, and I was talking to a fellow. Um, a friend of mine, he, he stopped me on the way and uh, just wanted to talk to me. And I put my, I rode my bike up on the sidewalk. Three guys. Now, I didn't even see him. I was talking to my friend. Three guys, men, white, came and approached me. Right then and there, I got scared. I didn't know they wanted to cover. But I said, listen, you want to take the bike? I got scared. They said, um... They didn't announce it, that they were undercover, but I got scared and I tried to bum rush past them and they put me to the ground. They put me to the ground and I didn't realize who they were until they had handcuffs on me. I said, Jesus. And my friend, I was told, he said, hey, be cool. They're undercover. I said, oh, Lord. It couldn't have been a worse time on my way to work. And they did that. I said, Lord, have mercy. When I saw that on the TV, what he, I said, Lord, I was so straight. But you know, 
with that being said, you don't, like uh, Evangelion Berkeley Williams said, you don't know whether they're racist, you don't know whether they, you don't know who they are. Even if they're cops, you just don't know who they are. And I was of the opinion, I said, Lord, I was praying, I was praying so hard. I said, Lord, let them not hurt me. When they put me in the van, I said, okay, now I know what it's about. I know what it's about. But that was like, um, it's a, it's a, to the point where I'm afraid to call the cops. I know the, the Lord has got his hands on me, the protector, but I, I fear even calling cops because I just don't know. But I said, Lord, even when I'm in the precinct, I said, I was doing some praying. I said, Lord, I hope this never happens again. But I never want to see it happen to nobody ever again because that's devastating. That is so devastating. Wow. Thank you, Deacon Singleton. Um, uh, it's amazing the scars that these things leave on you even after a period of time. Uh, you don't know it until it's happened to you. Uh, do we have any more hands raised? Um, no more hands raised, but there is quite a couple of comments. Okay, so, we'll uh, take those comments and then we'll get back to the panel. Okay, so there, there's a question that says, please make the difference between looters and protesters. Okay, okay, and, you, should we answer that now or you, you wanna read them all? I'll, I'll do these two together since they're pretty much together. Okay. Um, and do most police officers have friends outside of themselves? Uh, do most police officers have friends outside of themselves, fellow officers? Okay. Well, we so have that would be directed towards Minister Sean. Sean Kennan. All right. And um, I guess the board can just chime in on the difference between a looter and a protester. Um, the looter is coming out to rob. Uh, they're coming to take uh, whatever they can get. Uh, and they're not even concerned about the protest. Uh, they're using this as a time for them to get stuff. That, that, that's what a looter does. They take stuff and they, they're, they're going to be selling it on the corners. And to everybody that's listening, I grew up in Brooklyn, y'all. I grew up in Brooklyn. There will be guys with fresh meat, and you know that they're not a butcher. <laughs> <laughs> and they will have it out the back of their trucks, and people will be buying it. Um, uh, speaking of looting, when I was very young, when Dr. King died, I lived in Brooklyn, and on Decatur Street, um, uh, mm -hmm. I remember when we heard that uh, he had been assassinated, uh, Dr. King. And I want to tell you that the folk went crazy. They burnt down, they burnt down all of Broadway. Our supermarkets, our laundromats, our everything. And that was them expressing that they were upset. But the same token, after they burnt down everything, we had to search for a place to go food shopping. So, you know, you have to think about what you're doing. Like we keep going back to that scripture. Be angry, but sin not. Know what the results will bring you. So the difference between a looter is a person that's looking to take advantage of a moment and rob where they know they won't get caught, all right? And a protester is that person that's out to um, want to have their voices heard concerning the issue that they're marching about. So don't get those two confused. You never want to be on the looting end. You want to be on the protesting end, all right? Okay. Um, I don't know. Um, before we go to Minister Sean, uh, panelists, do you all want to weigh in on the looting and the protester? Pastor, you, you're spot on. All right, all right. God bless you. We're going to move to Minister Sean Kennett. So, Mr. Sean, the, the question was, um, do most of police officers have friends outside of themselves? like fellow officers. Let's repeat the question again. Uh, do most police officers have friends outside of themselves, meaning outside of other, oh, other officers? Um, unfortunately, most police officers deal with police officers. 
Um, I have friends out, outside of police department and then I have the church. But mo because the hours that we, we work and just the way it is, uh, we have our free time, most of our friends uh, usually winds up being other police officers. So that's again ingrained in the in the culture. Um, I want to talk about looting. There are three people that are at this protest, actually four. Mm -hmm. You have the looter, you have the professional protester that's just to, there to antagonize and to get people riled up. Uh, you have the people there to protest, and then you have on anarchists. They are there uh, with no agenda of the purpose of the protest, but they're there to entice and incite and um, be anti-government. And they are uh, seemingly, the, uh, they say Russian spies, other countries, but there are four people that are at this protest. Uh, Minister Kinnan, will you give us those four because this is interesting? Because one thing that I want people to know that if you're gonna get involved in any type of protest, you need to know who's marching with you. All right, yeah, I think you should know who's out there with you. Well, would you go through those four again, Minister Kinnan? All right, you had the people that are protesting. They okay. there were signs, they're shouting, they're usually under a group. Maybe okay. Black Lives Matter or different groups that are out there. Then you have the people that are um, uh, professional protesters. They're with the cause, but they are professional protesters. Or they spend day and night protesting. And if you're out there protesting, they'll be with you in support of the issue. They just like to protest. Then you have the anarchists. The anarchists are there to incite a riot and to incite fighting and police brutality. And they're just there to stir the pot. And they're not interested in protests, but they're interested in tearing down our government and the American society. Maybe. Then you have, in between there, you have the looter. That's the opportunists. People that go pilfering, uh, ravaging, damaging property, uh, taking stuff from stores, and tearing down our community. Uh, uh, and there is two people from our community that uh, are involved in that. So you have to understand who is at this protest. Good. Thank you, Minister Kennan. That, that was very helpful. Very helpful. Um, uh, Sister Jarell, I see some hands raised. Yeah, it's just give me one more. Just type in that so everybody will have it. Okay. Um, so we do have, let's see it. Okay, uh, Brother Jeff, you can go ahead and unmute, sir. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. I'm uh, just leaving work and trying to make my way home. Um, I just wanted to add on to what uh, Mr. Sean said. So with the four, you can add yet another group. And this is something that I saw in the media today. So you have a, a, a well-known anarchist group which is Antifa. So now you have full grown hate groups who are now using the moniker of Antifa to be able to do destructive things to communities of color. So you have basically a legitimate vehicle for protest, but you will have anti-government groups and now hate groups mixing in behind legitimate protests to not necessarily help protesters, but to wage a war against the government and to wage war against people of color at the same time. And that's just something else to think about. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jeff. All right. So, okay, we'll get to the comments. Oh, okay. So our sister Lisa Arnum Brown stated, she said, I agree that racism is a sentiment that is left over from the days of slavery. We must understand that slavery, slavery has not completely ended. It has merely changed ways. Every day since the whole process has started, all I felt is anger. 
I can't get away from it because the majority of the people I work with are black. I pray for my anger to go away, but it is hard. I pray for my sons and my brothers to be invisible when they go out. Now when I'm off, all I do is stay in prayer and praise. I don't mean to downplay what's happening on the streets, but it's like a child having a tantrum and no amount of talking to him is gonna calm him down until he gets out. You have our sister Monique Wright who states, uh, we need to look at our hearts first, then teach our homes. Racism is something that has been taught. We can change things just by teaching our children right and wrong. Um, our sister Tenaria Truman Smith said, Brooklyn. Um, sister Joyce Eaton said, I know that Bishop. Um, I was in Jamaica, Queens, looting it was open stealing. Mm. Um, we have our brother Eddie Johnson said, uh, we need to come together as one, start our own business and credit unions, bank, uh, make sure you vote, work with the city government and community service, and take a stand against uh, injustice. Um, he said, uh, that's right, Bishop Facts, we need to get out of the house. Um, see, okay, um, our sister Joyce Eaton said, Thank you for teaching on voting because being part of your community and being part of your community action, action, having a say in what's going on. God bless you and keep you praying for you, Bishop Farmer. Um, let's see here. All right, First Lady Renee Moat said, yes, please go and vote, fill out your census. Um, and that's what we have for comments there. We do have, um, other comments that came in on the chat and said, um, a caller's uh, phone uh, just says the phone. Um, I agree, everyone should vote. We have a house where everyone most must vote. Um, we mailed the forms to receive the absentee ballots. Uh, make sure you're getting your absentee ballots for voting. All right, and then we do have one caller left and that is our assistant Natasha Hill. Okay. <clears throat> and let's see. All right, uh, Sister Natasha, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Just hit unmute again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Sister Flowers. Um, what I want to just bring out is that um, I understand based on what Minister Sean said, um, the different types of people that are at the protest. Because I, I voiced on Facebook on last evening, um, I was pretty much upset and hurt on top of her because of all of the things that was happening behind the protest. I commend the people that are protesting peacefully, are going about it the right way. But at the same token, those that were looting and those that were blowing up cars and those that were hurting other people because of their actions, it has forced the hands of the police to have to come and be more aggressive. That means there's gonna be more bloodshed, more people that wind up hurt. And all of this is because there are people out there that have purpose in their hearts to do evil. The Bible says to be angry and sin not, but we have those that are standing behind using this poor man's situation as an excuse to hide behind, to do the wickedness that is in their hearts. And people are frustrated and they are angry. But at the same time, there is a way to do things. Um, violence on top of violence is not going to get our voices heard. It's going to bring a more negative approach on all the positive things that we are trying to get accomplished. So my thing was if people would just stop and think about their actions and take a look at what is really going on around them and be able to pursue this with wisdom and most of all prayer for those that are in the groups that are protesting. Prayer is essential because yes, we are fighting against demonic forces. 
and these forces are controlling people that don't have the love of Christ in their heart, a lot of them, and want an opportunity to pursue evil and do evil works. You know, unfortunately, um, this man's death, they make it in vain. How he suffered and what he suffered, they made it in vain because of the violence and the hurt and the more pain that they are causing. Not only black people, the police, um, the family of this gentleman and so many others that they're feeling that pain all over again because of the, the, the crazy rioting that it has accomplished. It's not going to accomplish the task that we need it to be. We have to think this thing through wisely and with wisdom and find ways to go about it to make a difference without the violence. You understand? And um, this was just something that was on my heart. My heart was so grieved. Um, when I saw the video, I just, I wept and cried. And I asked God to please, please calm down the hearts of the people, the wicked, and allow people to just stop and think. Yes, Martin Luther King, they, they, they protested, but they did it peacefully. You understand? And there is a way to do things. And the violence is not the way. It's not helpful. That's a lot. Amen. Thank you, Benjis Flowers. All right, we have uh, our Deacon Calvin and Annette Hanley again. Uh, and after that, we have our Suleon Ferguson, and then we will pause to go back to the panelists. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, I just need to say this, that um, at a time when this country is in turmoil, um, we put a lot of weight on what we as black people and people of color, what we have to do. And I agree with that, that we have that we have to work to help solve the problem. But I do have to say what lays heavy on my heart is that the leadership of this country with our President Trump, people don't want to open up and say anything about his name because he is the president. But at the same time, a lot of people look at this man because they don't have any God in their life or they feel that he is next to God and they follow what he does. They follow what he says. OK. And so this thing is a real burden also. And I'm so grateful that we pray for the government and the leaders, because while we have looters who are opportunists, you also have the people who are in government that are opportunists as well, taking advantage of this time so that when they see it coming to voting time, that they can throw their hat is in the ring and we'll remember some words they said or that may have touched us depending on what our beliefs are. And this is something that's very grievous to me that the actions of the president, for four or five days, he said nothing of any real essence. And then the last two days now, he's come, the things that he has said has been so hurtful in terms of moving us forward. Even his actions on yesterday, um, tear gassing people so that he can have a photo op. We, that's the thing we got to remember when we go to the polls or that we got to get up out of our beds, get up off our seats and go and take this man down in that kind of peaceful way. And we've got to remember, it's not just our problem, look, our leadership. We, it, we must continue to pray for the leadership of this country because they're not really helping the matter. Thank you. Excellent. Well said. Well said. All right. We have our sister, uh, Leona Ferguson. You can just unmute yourself. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, in 2005, I was in Boston, and I was in school, and I took a course called multi-racism, multi, it was something multicultural, or some, something about racism. And 
the professor was a black woman and the students majority of this class was white and mixed. So the, the class was for one week, it was a nine to five. And um, this was, uh, we had a fire, a fireman because his family, I mean, some of his friends were in the 9-11, so he had an uh, issue about that. And the big deal was that, um, say on Monday, she said that it was gonna get heated in the classroom, but we didn't know what she meant. So by Tuesday, she had, um, she had chart paper placed around the, the room and they were, and she had certain groups go to the paper and put up that you are part of that group. You're, you're, you're white, you're Asian, you're African, you're mixed, you're whatever you were, you put your name on those papers. Okay, so then the, the next day is when it became very ugly in the room. It's because the next day, when he started questioning why you have your name there and um, what was your rationale, a lot of people, mainly the white people in the room, they thought that they had a special, you know, I don't want to call it a special privilege, but they felt that there was no reason for them to, to be concerned about any other, other races in the room. And then the people that were mixed, where their names were on several papers, they were having problems with that because we didn't look like who they thought we should look like. So as they, um, the people became so hostile that they were almost fighting each other in this room. This was a classroom on a university, on a campus. And so the bottom line was, when we got down to why certain people were not as angry as the others, but mainly it was the white people were the most angriest of all, because they were afraid. So when they came to me, when they got around to my to why I, I'm I'm not afraid, I said first of all, the majority of the world is not white, and because they were they were afraid how they the, um, I forget it was like, say within 20 years, within 20 years, there will be more, 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 um, I don't use the word people of color. There will be more descendants from other um, countries than themselves. And so they were afraid of that because they, they were afraid that they're not going to see them. They're not going to see those, those, um, what they consider white, they're not gonna see that. And that frightened them. And they, they were so hostile, so angry that they were almost at each other's throats. So the next day was, I would say by Thursday, they was hatching it out. Now by Friday, the um, professor gave one more, one more chance for everybody to, you know, to, to uncover all that, all that fear that they were having. And then the room broke. All the people began to cry. A, I would say a six foot five firefighter is crying. Everybody was in tears crying. Just to show you that it's all the fear is what um, causes the racism. And mm -hmm. if it wasn't for that, their fear of being not in charge or being the the dominant race it's the fear and that's what i'm just contributing on that amen amen thank you sister ferguson thank you amen uh i don't see any more hands raised or comments at the moment there's just one comment and then uh we'll Turn it back to the panelists. We have right. a uh, sister Shirley Westbrook who said, "Racism does uh, racism goes deeper than words. It's a way of life for some. Unless we stop surfacing it, surfacing it, dialogue is needed. But in reality, on how it affects our lives." 
Hey, thank you. Now back thank to you. the panel. Mm -hmm. All right, we, we, we are now back at the panelists. And I think we've, we heard a lot of things tonight. Uh, let's look at some solutions. How can we go about uh, doing what we need to do to make this change? And um, I, I know our panelists are ready and uh, we're gonna hear from them now. Um, I'm gonna start with, we're gonna leave probably Minister Ken and we'll put him somewhere in the middle. Uh, and um, let's start with Evangelist Nika Williams. Praise the Lord, saints again. I want to commend you all for being transparent, for coming, <laughs> contributing to our conversation, both you um, on the Zoom and in Facebook. Thank you so very much. Um, because we wanted to provide a platform as a church, as a spiritual entity, um, as the kingdom of God, for you to voice what you say and let you know that we have not turned a deaf ear or a blind eye to what is going on. Um, so we want to commend you for that. Um, I want to say, this, and I started off by saying this, that um, perfect love casteth out all fear because fear mm. is torment. And the love of our love level, one of the solutions is our love levels have to be turned up. And I'll break that down really quickly and so that um, everyone else can have a chance to speak. Um, but anger is a it is a force because when anger hits you, you feel it on every level. And it causes you to actually move and do. So what I would submit as part of a solution to the problem is Let's take our, the anger, the energy from the anger, and let's use it for something positive. Voting is a, is a great start. That's an awesome start. Register to vote. Go ahead and vote. Do the census. Now that we're still on lockdown, you can do it. It takes five minutes from your computer. You can do the census from your phone. But we started this whole series out with finding out what our gifts were. Remember that? And the gifts that we found out, we found out that they were kingdom transferable, meaning that they could be worked in the church as well as in the world. Take that gift and let's use that to start building up our community. I took my gift as a counselor and started a business. So I deal with a lot of mental health. Um, but what can you do? Some of you are great activists. Some of you have great voices. You can, you can join these community boards. You can join with our councilmen, our assemblymen, and be activists in the community. Some of you are great organizers and administrators. <clears throat> take those gifts that you have, and let's take the energy of our anger and use it for something positive. Not only that, some of you are great numbers. We can start corporations. We need our own things. Why don't we have our own banks? Why don't we, and when I say own, not only black owned or brown and um, brown and black people owned, but Christian owned. We need Christian schools. We can have a Christian laundromat. We can have a Christian um, bank to go to. We can have a Christian whatever. Go to the precinct and start um, galvanizing the cops in our community and letting them know, listen, we're here, let's pray with you. We're here, here's our church. Um, because when you, because what we're doing is while we're using our gift, we're allowing the love of God to be shed abroad in our heart. And that love is the drawing card. Cause he says, no man cometh unto me except he's drawn. Will this end? I don't know because the Bible says that perilous times are coming, they are here. It's going to wax worse. But the requirement of the church is to fight it with our gifts, with our energy, with our talents, but most of all, with the love of God. Remember the microabrasions, the microaggressions. Let the healing start in the church because we can't invite anybody else to come in to help them if our healing process has not been taking place properly before we can go out and do it. Let's, let's work on healing each other. And then the other thing is as a community, as a church, let's unify. Because what they, what they have been able to do is divide us and tear us apart. Um, and that's been one of the biggest problems. It's not just a color issue. It's not just a, um, a black and brown issue. It is a human issue at this point. Humanity is sick. The land is sick. And so while we're praying and fasting, let's put our gifts to use so that we as a community, we can build our own community. And this can, this it may not stop, but it can be staunched in its step. We can slow it up. Okay, so let's put our energy, let's take the anger, the energy of anger and put it to good use. Very good, very good. Excellent, excellent. 
Minister Anu. Praise the Lord, everyone. Lord. So just definitely um, loving everything that was spoken tonight in reference to whether it was your experiences or even some of the solutions that were provided. Um, I like how Sister Kathy mentioned that it's not a white against black type of issue. Is a, we're talking about the racism, that, that um, component. So some of the things I heard was, as far as solutions, was to pray. And then I was speaking as far as in Dix, talked about going to the precinct, um, being active just to help just to show that love. So what also came to mind is some type of collaboration. So Sister Rosary talked about going to the precinct, or you know, with churches, pastors, uh, church <laughs> members, community board members, the community as a whole. Um, for now, we would probably have to be some type of virtual town hall meeting, but something where the people's voices are being heard. You know, a lot of people haven't had the opportunity to speak up. Okay, and be able to talk about what's been bothering them or the different things that they've been experiencing through this whole issue. So just having some type of town hall meeting where people have the opportunity to speak about what's on their mind and even brainstorm ideas. You know, we as a church, how we can help um, move us forward as a community, as a whole. Um, educating each other, you know, so even holding up some as a church, you know, different things that we can do um, holding up some workshops, you know, some different sessions that's open to the community. We can advertise it, we can post it, but open it up to the communicate community to help educate them on the different topics such as racism, such as implicit bias, um, such as, you know, um, trauma, you know, bringing in our counselors, um, our therapists in to speak about that. Um, also something I, I learned um, with attending a trauma training, is developing a trauma lens. So a lot of individuals have dealt with trauma when they were younger, different things have happened to them. Even some, we heard some tonight, some uh, individuals still have the experiences embedded in their minds of what they went through um, pertaining to cops, you know, dealing with just cops. Um, and this event triggered <laughs> that experience. You know, so even just having somebody come in and talk about that and us truly um, being empathetic for these individuals and to not be fearful, you know, not to be fearful as children of God, you know, not to be fearful to speak up, not to be fearful to take action. And the Bible tells us in Romans 8, what then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? We have to always remember that God is for us. Through this whole situation, God is for us. Um, he, I'm sorry, excuse me, he who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? So also keeping that in mind, you know, that we cannot be silent, you know, so not being silent is another solution, you know, speaking up, whether it's to your friends, whether it's to your family members, but truly taking a stand for what is right and what you believe in. And I wanted to share this quote um, really quickly with you as well in reference to uh, solutions, since we're talking about that. I see no color is not the goal. I see your color and honor you. I value your input. I will be educated about your lived experiences. I will work against the racism that harms you. You are beautiful. Tell me how to do better. That is our goal, and that's by Carlos Rodriguez. So I thought that was extremely important um, because in the situation that we're dealing with now. So those are just some of the solutions that I felt would be helpful um, for this situation. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Minister Keonis. Praise the Lord. Uh, just two things I would say is that um, realize what your sphere of influence is. Depending on where you work, what influences you have, that's the power God's given you to affect. So versus my fear of influence is teaching. So one thing I saw, I realized, I made to realize there are plenty of racist teachers. There are plenty of white teachers out there who think they're doing a service, teaching our black children and do all these different things. But now my job is now to try and teach them how to not embed racism at that age. 
And like I said, the key is really education, education, education. We need to teach people um, about the love of God, how to love, how racism works, how it's where, how, what does it look like inside of you? Um, there's just so much that we need to do. We need to educate um, our young black children, boys and girls. What's, how do you handle when you're approached by a cop? What can you do? I remember when I first came, I asked our minister, our police officer, so if I'm pulled over, what should I do and what should I not say? What should I, what should I could, I mean, what should I say, what I should not say? What should I add? Educate them how to handle the situation, how to handle your anger. Um, so like I said, all this is under education. Like I said, racism is taught and the only way to unteach it is to give you strategies on how to address it. Very good, very good. Last but not least, uh, Minister Sean Kennan. Unmute yourself, Minister Kennan. Take yourself off mute. I got you. Bye, Jack. Okay. Um, a lot was said, definitely about educating yourself on how to do, how to handle a police encounter. You. Uh, got to be uh, smart and wise and compliant. Um, any level of non-compliance is usually met with force. The measure of that force or the reasonableness of that force is based on my perspective. So that is objectionable, you know, sub subjected, I should say, uh, to that officer. And that is the question that we have before us, how much force is used in a situation. Um, so first you want to be compliant with the officers. There are ways after the process of being arrested or being encountered by the police officer to deal with uh, the disrespect, uh, the mistreatment or the abuse of authority. You can uh, go to uh, complain against a police officer for using excessive force you can go to the uh, uh, CCRB, which is uh, Community uh, Police uh, Assessive Force Board, and they will take your complaint. Um, and they will handle it, and they take those complaints now very seriously under, under this administration with Bill de Blasio. Uh, so there are things that we can do uh, when we're encountered with the police or when we think we have been treated unfairly. But I want to say that education is the key. One of the things that we have been working on uh, since Eric Gardner was implicit bias and versus explicit bias. Implicit bias is hidden and explicit is out there. What is going on in this country under President Trump, those biases that were hidden have come to the surface and it's now explicit. Uh -huh. But we have to have continue to have the conversation when he is not in office or when things are calm and talk about the implicit bias because we all uh, have biases and they will come out in, when we, in the way we work and especially policing how we handle people. And I too, myself, uh, working in uh, certain communities and seeing crime and uh, dealing with the uh, crime criminal element you become hard and you become callous and you put everybody in a particular group and you say, oh, because you just see the worst of everybody. You don't see the good, so we see the worst. And so you, 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 you look at media, you look at television, you look at movies and you begin to lump things together in your mind and you say, yeah, this person is a criminal or instead of judging each person, each individual on their own, on their own merit, are looking at each individual, each case, case by case, supposed to go by case by case. But over time, over years, you develop a, a, a hardened exterior and you develop a, a grouping together. And that's how implicit bias works. And you will say, they're all like that. Are they all criminals? Are they all have guns? Are they all violent? And I think that's part of the problem, that we begin to have these conversations in times of peace. Also, again, when we look at even 
disciplining. Uh, we will discipline uh, a black cop harder than we'll discipline a white cop. Or if a, 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 a case is brought up, you know, right, you'll see the difference in how we even discipline. And so within our department, we see biases, we see racism. And so that is a factor and that is an issue. But we are to let our light shine, the Bible says, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Never, neither do your men put light under a candle, light a candle and put it under a bushel, but a candlestick and give it light unto the world that are all in the house. So let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. So I pray that we will continue to have these conversations and continue to uh, expose, the enemy is exposed, the devil is exposed, racism is exposed, the light is on him. And so we have to uh, pray that these issues will be exposed within our city, within our department. Uh, the, the injustice, uh, continue to look at um, policing when we say, we want police in our own community. Most of the police that are hired are from uh, Long Island. They don't live in the inner city. So perhaps maybe we can have laws to say that, you know, we need to hire police officers that live in the city, that live in New York, uh, that understand our problems and our community and know our community. And not everybody is a criminal. You know, I go home to a safe place and I come to the city, which is chaos. That's the thought. So. Uh, we need a lot of prayer and we need a lot of change. And we need to pray that those that are in power will affect change. Amen. Thank you, Minister Kennan. Um, to all of you that are live with us tonight, um, we wanted to just bring a little light to what's going on around us. And um, we started off and seemed to be the uh, the scripture for the night, be angry and sin not, and let not the sin go, let down the sun go down on your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Amen. And we must understand that we're fighting a spiritual war uh, as much as we are a natural war. And we have to know how to settle in the middle. Some of this is spiritual and some of it is natural. But at the close of the day, we must know what side we border. And as Christians, we border on the side of the Lord. He says that he's given us all power, all power. That's not some power, but he says he's given us all power. And y'all know that when someone uh, gives you power, uh, that gives you authority. It, it allows you to do things that other people cannot do. And because we are called for such a time as this, uh, I have to think back to Old Testament. We asked her, said, well, uh, could it be that you've come to the kingdom for such a time as this? And the answer is yes. We're in the kingdom for such a time as this. While the kingdom is suffering violence, we must understand, taking it by force does not mean knocking somebody in the head, but it means taking the authority that God has given us to go against those powers of darkness. And God has given us the ability to do that. So we have our, our takeaway from the table tonight. Uh, we found out that one thing that is much needed is teaching. We must start to teach more. Um, our young men must be educated on how to conduct themselves when they're out. Certain things they need to learn how to do. Certain things they should not do. Um, we have to learn to utilize our gifts. Um, uh, Minister um, Evander Znika talked about that. Now that God, we have uh, gotten the revelation of what our gifts are. We took that test, that quiz, and we learned what the tests, what, what different uh, gifts that we manifest, and we need to manifest those gifts now, all right, because the world needs them right now. Uh, we found out that we could go to the community board. Uh, I would say Christ Pentecostal Temple, we have had the opportunity of going to the precincts, uh, Thanksgiving, we had an opportunity to go and take them dinner. They didn't ask for it. We bought it to them. And to my surprise, after we bought the dinners, they accepted the dinners with a lot of thank yous. And I was just turning my back to walk out. 
And they grabbed me and said, look, you can't leave here without praying with us. So you see that they are open to prayer. And at that time, there was only two black officers in there. The rest were all white. And they were saying that, could you please pray with us? So our community, our precincts, they want us to help. They want us to help regardless of what you're hearing, regardless of what they're saying. It only takes one to change a whole shifting of atmosphere. So we want to go to our community boards, make ourselves visible. While, uh, while, we were, while they were talking, I was creating this list when the Lord blesses us to be able to open that doors of the church again, and we're, we're, we're safe from this pandemic. I want to like once a month have just a community meeting where we would invite our neighbors, invite them in, uh, hear their voices, uh, um, and, and you know, serve a little something and let them know that we're here in the community to effect change. And the only way that people know that you're there to do it is if you have the opportunity to uh, invite them in. All right. So we will. Uh, we, we that's something that I want to start working on. That as we move forward, um, I would love to see a, a, a protest for us to get involved in something like that. But right now, as your pastor, as your leader, I understand that we're still in a pandemic. All right. And looking at these groups, you know that they are not social distancing themselves. Uh, so we have to be very careful of those things right now. But I'm saying that as a church, that we will do something, even if it calls for us to stand on the front of, of Christ Pentecostal Temple on the steps, distant, with a sign that says Black Lives Matter or whatever, and send that out to let them know that we do stand with those that have lost loved ones. And as a church, we are doing something. And of course, last but not least, we will continue to fast and pray because at the close of the day, that's what's going to get the job done, that we fast and pray. All right. Um, I, I don't know what else I can add to it. Well, Pastor, uh, we should mention that if anyone needs prayer, even right now, if you're going through... If you're not feeling well in your body, if you're feeling emotional, we have ministers on the line who can pray for you right now on our church prayer line. If you need someone to talk to, now is the time to call in. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Kenneth. As our ministers are prepared to minister to you, again, I want you to know that during this time, I started off by talking about anger being an emotion. And if it's not handled properly, the next place that anger goes to is rage. And rage speaks of violence. So we don't want our anger to reach that point. So we want to keep it in check. Last but not least, I want to leave you two verses from the Bible. Proverbs 15 and 18 reads, A hot-tempered man stirs up strife, but he who is slow to anger quiets contention. Proverbs 29 and 22. A man of wrath stirs up strife, and one given to anger causes much transgression. So with that being said, I want you to understand that we can control this. Evangelist Nika put it this way. She said, take that anger and we channel it. All right? And let's be about our father's business. I hope that those of you that are watching us live I hope you had an opportunity to say what was on your heart. Uh, this round table was just created so that we can hear the voices of the people, of our people out there, and wanted to let you know that we are concerned about what you're feeling. We didn't want this moment to pass by and let you think that we were not concerned. So we want to certainly thank you for all of you that chimed in with us. And we're going to get ready to dismiss in prayer. Amen. And, and, and we know what we're praying for. Amen. And we're going to right now, I, I'm going to ask each one of our ministers will just take a few minutes in this prayer. We will start out with our lady ministers. Amen. And we will end up, I will end the prayer um, 
and with benediction. All right, so we will start with Minister Jennifer Arnu. Next will be Minister Evangelist Mika, Minister Steve, and our Minister Sean Kennan. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Yes, Father, we come before you, Lord, this evening, God. We thank you, Lord, for allowing this platform, God, and allowing this people to come together, God, to speak, God, giving them this opportunity, God, to share what's on their mind, God, to share their experiences, God, to share their worries, God. We just thank you, Father. We're coming before you to ask you right now, God, to forgive us, God, for anything that we did, any thoughts that came across our minds during this pandemic that we're in, Father God, any negative thoughts that came across our mind, God, anything that we said out of our mouth, God, that was not of you, Father, we're asking you for forgiveness right now, God. Understanding that this time is quite difficult, Father God, there are a lot of mixed emotions taking place, God, even us as believers, God, hallelujah, God, there are some things, God, that we are just not happy about, God. There are just some things, God, that we're angry about, Father. We're asking you right now, Father, to help us through this time, God. Help us, show us the how-to, Father God. Help us, God, to channel that anger, God, towards something that is going to be positive, Father, and impactful, God. That's going to bless your people right now, God. Help us, God, to plant the seed, God, of joy, God, love, God, and peace, Father God. Help us, Father God, even if we're battling different things, God, that affected us from years ago, Father God. Help us, God, to deal with it and it, so it can be killed as the root, Father God. Help us, Father God, to spread your love, God, to those who are around us, God. It doesn't matter what color, it doesn't matter the cultural background, Father God, but help us, Father God, to be God, the life, God. To be God, to us to be God. Oh, Father God, help us right now, God, for this time, God, to not be silent, Father, but to speak up and to utilize the gifts that you have placed inside of us, God, to be a blessing towards others right now, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, and it is so in your name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, creator and maker of all wise. We honor you on tonight. Father, we thank you, God, that you are so wise. For God, you truly are the author and finisher of our faith. Father, you put it in the hearts of your people and the brain of our pastor to even provide this platform. Father, we thank you, oh God, that we have a place that we have we can safely talk about. For your word declares, come, let us reason together. Hallelujah, God, we thank you, Lord, that you love us enough not to leave us the way we are. Father, your word declares that we are to come boldly to the throne of grace where we may obtain help in the time of need. Father, you said that if we call on your name, God, you would answer. Father, you said that nations are going to rise against nations. So, Father, this doesn't surprise us, God, and it doesn't bring a bead of sweat to your forehead. You're not upset that we are upset. You're just waiting for us to come to you, God. Father, for our anger, hallelujah, is there. But your word declares that you were slow to anger. Why? Because you had a plan. Hallelujah. So, Father, we call on your plan, God. We call on your wisdom, God. We call on the power of your love. Father, we ask that you help us to turn our love up so that it casts out fear. God, that it begins to draw those that are stuck in the wickedness of this demonic spirit. Satan, Jesus. Lord, rebuke you. The blood of Jesus is against you. This spirit of unrest, anger, racism, unruliness, God, that is in our land, that is causing our land to rise up the way it is, God. Father, we need you to arrest it. Father, we need you to move by your spirit. Show your hand, God. Hallelujah. Father, I pray a special prayer over our police officers. God, I pray that you keep their hearts in this time, for it is not easy for them, for there is confliction in their spirit. But God, you said you're not the author of it. So, Father, we're leaning and depending on you, God. Father, I ask that you save some soul. God, the best revenge is you raising up a soul out of the midst of this and them coming back and saying, God did this for me. So, Father, I'm looking for the soul in this. My eyes are glued to heaven. My ears are tuned to you, God. Show me where to go and what to do, Father, and I'll be your obedient soldier. Father, I commit this prayer in your hands. I lay it at your feet, thanking you and believing you for total victory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
and amen. amen. Minister Kionis. Bless your name right now, O oh God. Father, we war in the spirit right now, O oh God. Father, we come against every spirit that's trying to rise up in the land, O oh God. In the name of we come against every spirit that will try to war against the people of God that's wreaking chaos and damage and destruction. Father, we loose the power of the blood of Jesus even right now, O oh God. Father, keep the saints of God covered and protected, O oh God. Remember all the saints of God in our house and across the land, all across the body. Lord. Help us, Lord, to be the saints of God you've called us to be, Lord, in these last and evil days. Father, Keep us in the midst of these perilous times, oh God. My God, keep the body of Christ. Help us, Lord, to be the light of this world and to be the salt of the earth, oh God. Help us, Lord, not to lose our savor, oh God. Help us, Lord, to keep us in the word, in the power of your might, oh God. Father, we come against every demon, hallelujah, that will try to wreak havoc in the land, oh God. Oh God, we ask that peace may abound in the name of Jesus. We loose the power of the Holy Ghost to arise and shine across the land, oh God. Father, move in the the midst of your people, oh God. Father, get us ready for the sound of the trumpet, oh God. Get us ready for your return, oh God. Father, put us on the potter's wheel and mold us and make us and shape us. Father, even in the midst of this pandemic, oh God, we know that you're in control. Father, in the midst of the protests and the chaos and the looting, oh God, uh, we know that God is in control. Hallelujah. I God, keep us covered under the shadow of your wings. All these things we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Minister Sean Kennan. Father God, we thank you, Jesus. We give you Amen. glory. We give you honor, God. We give you praise, God. We thank you, God, for what you have done. We thank you, God, for this session tonight, oh God, where our hearts can talk and cry out, oh God, and we can come to an understanding. Father, we pray, hallelujah, that you will just begin to go into our government, oh God, into our leaders, oh God, oh God, and, and give them the answer and give them a strategy, oh God, and give them the policies, God, that need to be made, oh God, the change that needs to happen. Father, we pray for our mayor, Bill de Blasio. We pray for our governor, Governor Cuomo. We pray that you open the eyes of our president, Hallelujah, Donald Trump, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray against racism, oh God. Father, we see its hand. We see, oh God, what it does in our communities. And God, we pray that you root it out in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for every black man, hallelujah, every black girl, every person of color, hallelujah, when they have a police encounter, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, we pray, we pray the protection of the blood, hallelujah, that will cover them and keep their life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We pray, hallelujah, that we will not see this again. Hallelujah. Father, we pray, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, that you will protect, hallelujah, oh God, our black boys, I protect our young ladies in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, hallelujah, hallelujah, for giving us understanding how to operate and how to function when we have a police encounter. Hallelujah, how to use wisdom. Hallelujah how to use prudence in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now, hallelujah, for bringing those officers to justice, hallelujah, who have taken life, oh God, hallelujah, who are uh, incomplicit by being silent, oh God. Father, cause our silence. Father, we pray against the blue wall of silence. Hallelujah, that you expose the racism. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah, we thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, because you're bringing us to understanding. Father, cause our voice to be heard. Cause us to strategize as a church. Cause us to strategize as a community. Show us what to do. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that we can how God, be ready, oh God, to face this in our communities. Hallelujah. And and educate our community on uh, how to do. Father, we pray against the looting. I, I got. We pray against the violence and the damage against our community. Father, that you protect, protect our businesses, God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we pray, oh God, hallelujah, for the protection of the police officers who are standing to protect our communities. Father, protect them as they protect our communities. In the name of Jesus. Father, cover each and every police officer under your blood. Hallelujah. Cover each and every community 
uh, activists, oh God, who is protesting under your blood. Father, we pray that every looter, uh, God, will be arrested, oh God, and the violence will cease in the name of Jesus. Father, we commit this prayer into your hands. We thank you, O oh God, because you called us to be a royal priesthood. You caused us to be a holy nation. You called us to be a peculiar people. Hallelujah. That you should, that we, hallelujah, should let the praises of him show forth the praise of him who brought us out of darkness into this marvelous life. And so, Father, we thank you for your life. We thank you for the truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you thanking you, Lord, for those that are viewing right now, those that have voiced their concerns about what we're going through during this time. And Father, we want to tell you thank you because in the midst of all of this, you've kept us safe. You've kept us covered under your blood. Now, Father, I pray for the Floyd family. Uh, Father, now they mourn the death of a son, of a father, of a brother. Father, I pray right now, God, that you will console them during this time. And Father, not just the Floyd family, but the Gardner family and, and, and the other brother that's life was taken, God. I pray, God, that you will console these families, that you'll be with them. Father, let justice be served in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I pray for the men in blue. Father, I pray for everyone that you have strategically placed in every house, God, round about us, God, for every one of them, Lord, that step out of their door, we pray for your covering. Father, I pray for the ones that have a bad attitude. Change the attitude, God. Uh, that's not a problem for you. And while you're doing that, save them and fill them with the Holy Ghost. Father, I pray for every blood-washed cop, Lord, that's walking the beat, God. I pray, God, you have strategically placed them in every borough, God. We have saved men walking, God. We have saved ones in the precinct. And God, I pray that there will be an outburst, God, of the Holy Ghost. Fall on every precinct in the name of Jesus. God, fall on every captain, every sergeant. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray you root out prejudice in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that your hand will rest upon us in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we watch you turn the tide, God. And Father, we give you praise for what you're doing. Father, we will not let up. God, we will be consistent in seeking you, God, in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, have your way right now. Father, give us a restful night. Father, those that had no peace, give them peace. Lord, let peace overtake them tonight, God. God, take the anger away, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, and give them rest. God, give them the peace that passes all understanding. We ask these blessings all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now we give the benediction. The Lord bless thee. And the Lord make his face to shine upon thee. The Lord be gracious unto thee. The Lord let his countenance uh, rest upon thee and give thee peace. Father, we ask these blessings all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you all. Go in the peace of the Lord. Shalom. Look to see you next week at same time, same place. God bless you. To our panelists, thank you all. Thank you all. God bless you in Jesus' name.